And as I mentioned, this is a magnificent bridge, so I wouldn't actually want to even play with the, the view of this bridge when I'm coming across. Now, if I'm driving, I'm concentrating on getting the right lane because it's pretty <coughs> narrow. If I'm riding my bike, I'm just you know, trying to pedal up the hill because it's, it's pretty steep. If I'm walking, okay, maybe I can appreciate the view a little bit more. Another show of hands, where does the West End start? And I, I've given a couple of uh, hints here, like uh, these banners, and this is a view from Burrard and uh, Davy. So anyone thinks that the West End starts at uh, west of Burrard? Raise your hand. Okay. So that, that's actually the, the definition band map. Might differ from the zoning definition. And there are two uh, sites that have actually been changed in terms of the zoning. One is this community garden, which would allow up to 375 feet, and the other side 300 feet in terms of maximum discretionary height. And I decided to do a couple of renderings here. So this is uh, the view currently when crossing uh, Davy Street at Burrard, looking towards, uh, I guess, uh, Den Man and uh, English Bay. And this would be the view with towers going in on that site. And I actually thought this is a, a good piece of urban design uh, here that uh, Davy Street opens up to you when you uh, reach Burrard and invites people, invites you into Davy Village. And, and it's a great uh, piece of urban design, even if it's by accident. And uh, this would actually diminish, diminish the way that Davy Village reaches out to Burrard, which is our main north and south uh, through fair, and that's part of the city. I did this analysis, you can actually see the uh, Ferrari Gateway 550 scheme, or 550 scheme there, sorry, and potential uh, biometric uh, zoning envelopes for uh, the sites as uh, proposed. This is from Thurlow, and I'm using uh, Google, and I really have to thank Google for doing this great work, because otherwise I can do the, this analysis. That's how it looks like right now. So a lot of the sky is taken away if uh, you start building high rises along that stretch of Burrard. And uh, the nice thing about Google Earth 6 Beta is you can actually switch to the street view. So this is exactly the same view, just a little bit higher because uh, the street view camera is on top of a van, so it's not down from ground level. But it's the same view, and you can see the Starbucks there at Thurlow, and it's nice, wide, and open. And that's the way the city's evolved for a reason. And there are a lot of positives on getting all that sky there and that sense of openness. And you can see these three uh, perspectives side by side. And I have all of my models online, so you can actually go to cityhallwise.ca, grab the KML file, grab Google Earth, and look at it yourself. The other thing that's very interesting about the downtown in terms of an urban design point of view is that the downtown and uh, Davy Village, the entire grid is shifted about 45 degrees off the main Vancouver grid, which is like a 90 degrees. Actually, a little bit off, but virtually 90 degrees. And uh, this affords uh, a different opportunity in terms of solar access in the morning. And if these towers were to go in here on March the 1st at 10 a.m., and there would be significant blockage, even this far down on Davy, it would be very dark. And that's the sun there, same time of day, without the uh, potential buildings on those two sites. Let's go back. And I've done a few slides for analysis, but I'm not for now. And, and I'm also concerned about the existing uh, scale and the sense of place in Davy Village. Because if you actually allow two very large towers there at Burrard and Davy to uh, get established, and these, these sites are the low hanging fruit, because it is a gas station, it is a community garden with no restrictions, then there is a potential to start building towers all the way down Davy Village, and you are left with no Davy Village if this goes ahead, because the community can get taken apart piece by piece and by piece, and there is a certain threshold where it just falls apart. And uh, here's the overhead view of both the uh, 500 foot uh, gateway proposal, actually the gateway proposal is three towers, this is the Massey model I built using uh, drawings from the architect site, and this is the scale of the other uh, zoning envelopes, these are actual uh, extrusions. Give me a sec. Yeah, the other thing that I'm really concerned about are these canyons 
that are forming in Vancouver. And um, I actually lived in Toronto. I was born and raised in Toronto. And I uh, went to the University of Toronto. And I lived in Europe and in Budapest. I've been all around the world. And uh, the European experience uh, is really my preference. Because uh, I've seen low rises and medium rise cities down like Paris that are just wonderful in terms of livability. <coughs> and the canyon effect is is really far from me. And, and I'm going to bring up a few uh, more buildings here. But uh, it's very dark, it's very windy, and, and it's a different scale. We have a potential for a big wind tunnel. If a 550 foot tower gets built here and a 700 foot tower gets uh, built here as identified by the report on Alberta. And again, I'm just going to talk about graphics because it's very important the color to use, the graphics, the, the field of view, the texture of the images, and how you convey the message. And unfortunately, I haven't been able to independently verify any of these uh, perspectives using the same data because the city hasn't released the data. So. I've used Google Earth uh, and my own model making to do as much of that as I can. Uh, but here, I'm just going to point out that the fact that the Granville Loops uh, buildings are in green it is, is very deceiving in terms of the mental image that you actually think a, a skyscraper might be a green building. And it, it <coughs> just think about it. Yeah, it's, it's kind of funny. And, and the way it blends in with the background, so it looks like you're actually increasing the amount of mountain, increasing the forest in, in the scene. Now, uh, all I did is I just went into Photoshop and I tweaked the colors a little bit and uh, changed it to, a, I think, a more meaningful color that would better convey the, the impact of uh, such a proposal. Now the other thing that I really found missing with the report from the city is I like to see actual photographs because I like to go out to the site, get a sense of the, the place. And here's one of the uh, sites that have been identified for the Granville Loops, this empty late uh, block here for 420 foot tower. But um, I don't know if I would actually want to be living right there because it's going to get very dark very fast if the tower gets built here. And it's going to get even more dark if another tower gets built over here. Yes, there's a vacant site on the south side. So uh, usually the towers get built further away than people invest. They buy their units. Maybe they bought their, these people bought their units because they were expecting that no high rise can be built on this site because there's a threshold, I think, of 60 feet or so. I don't know if it still applies here from the freeway, so nothing's going to get built. And so now that they've invested in a condo here, maybe it was a long mortgage, and something's going to get built here, which is going to take away that view, that sense of sky and uh, space from them, and they're just going to see a wall. And of course, uh, if this tower goes up, then the other side to the south will have a similar treatment that they will have used for a few years. It gets developed, and then the view is gone, and they're going to see another building. So I don't know if this is the right way of development, because I wouldn't like to be in that situation. Now, with the Granville Loops, out at the site, I've got a question. I've got my own biases as a, someone who studied landscape architecture. But if I'm uh, crossing the uh, Granville Bridge, I get a couple of peaks of the mountains here and so on. But it, it's predominantly a built form. But what would you rather look at as a, let's say, a passenger or a pedestrian? Because if you're driving, I assume you're, you're concentrating on the road. So uh, you've got this uh, view. And this is the same view. So I'm just going to go back a little bit. You get this view of the silhouette of the mountains from the west end there. And then you also have this other view, basically from the same bridge. So you can choose if you want to look at the architecture of the downtown, a couple of little mountain views. You can look more at the silhouette. Or you can actually look at this great view past uh, English Bay and the Burrard Bridge and so on. It's, it's your choice. And there are different views than the one that you actually see in the computer model that's in the staff report. Now I'm going to go to uh, Spanish banks. And uh, you can see uh, a couple of those sites that have been by the seminar. Don't worry about that, we'll fix it. And so that's the proposed CBD expansion from Spanish banks. But I want to get a show of hands here. Um, can you see the mountains behind the downtown core when viewed from Spanish banks? 